Hello, this is Greg Rostami from Topaz Labs, and this is a tutorial on how to mask hair or very complex, fine features like hair or smoke or veils away from their background using Topaz Remask 3. So as you can see, we have a photograph of a lovely lady with blonde hair against a green background, and we'll just jump right into Topaz Labs Topaz Remask 3. Now, as always, remember how uh, the blue brush, which is the compute brush in Topaz Remask, is selected. So we're going to make a really, really thick brush and just kind of go around the areas that we know are going to be very, very difficult and have some of this subtle hair details. Now, as I go around the edges, please notice how I keep changing the size of my brush. Now, this is to compensate for areas that have a harsher transition or a harder transition and other areas that might have a softer hair transition. I can also zoom in to make this process easier. Now remember this is just going to be a really really rough outline so there's no need for you to you know exactly follow her contours but this is going to be our uh, simple first step. Okay once we got one side taken care of let's take a look at the other side now uh, and we're going to fill in this area here too. All right, so that was the hardest part. We got the outline. Uh, now the red is going to tell Remask 3 what's going to be the background. And if you uh, don't remember from the previous demonstration, the green tells the program what's solid in our mask. Once we've drawn our three tri map, time to hit the compute button, and you can see here that Remask is calculating to give us this mask. Now that actually looks really good considering that's our first draft. So as we look at our original image and we look at our keep, we can see that the mask is actually pretty good. Uh, now there are of course a few problems. It's not absolutely perfect. As we zoom in closer here to the hair, we can see there's a little bit of contamination. But first, before we get to the hair, let's solidify the parts of our mask that we know are easy. In fact, the parts that are just going to have the hard transitions. As I go around the edges here. I'm using the navigation that's in the upper left hand corner. Um, I look both at my original image here on the left hand side as well as looking here on the right to actually see if the mask or the keep is looking nice. Um, sometimes I will switch back and forth between the keep channel and the mask channel uh, to see if my mask is okay. And As I come around, for example, over here, I can see that there's a little bit there, so I can use a touch of green right here. Just kind of click on that, and it's going to help me solidify that part of the mask. Uh, we'll keep coming around over here again under keep, just kind of solidifying these few areas of our mask. Okay. Now that we know that uh, essentially all of the hard transitions are okay, it's now time to move on to the difficult parts of the hair. Uh, one of the new tools that was introduced in Remask 3 is the Single Color Selection Tool. And we're going to use that right now to help us hold back or to select some of these background colors that we know we don't need. Uh, just sample a little bit of that green back there, make your brush really big, and just really roughly kind of go around this area. And you'll see now immediately how Remask is just going to clean that up. Um, same around for these areas here, just kind of click and draw. And as we go around, we'll find more and more of these small regions that we can just quickly do a little quick and draw action to get rid of uh, some of these unwanted background features. Okay, it's beginning to look really good. All right. Now, uh, as we get back to uh, some of these difficult areas, I can see a little tiny hole over there. Let me go ahead and click on that region and draw. Uh, a little detail there so we can fill that in with the hole. Uh, it's looking really, really good. The only problem that I can see now is that some of the original green color that was a part of the original background is coming through our masked image. So by using the new foreground color recovery feature, I can bring that up a bit. And once again, Topaz Remask is hard at work trying to figure out how to correct for that color contamination. Okay. It's beginning to look really good. So you can see that some of the color contamination has left. And if you see any other areas over here that need some more work with the color contamination, feel free to grab your blue brush and just kind of touch up in these little areas here and there, like maybe a little bit over here. It's going to clean that up, maybe a little bit over here. Uh, we'll clean up that area as well so that we're not going to get as much green coming through there. 
Um, and it's beginning to look pretty good. Now, now we start reaching an area that is getting really, really difficult, and that is this area right here. Now, you can see that there's a lot of subtle details that are right here, that whereas we can't see that in our keep, and we cannot see it here in our mask. We can see that that area, let's start out actually with it in blue. That's beginning to look pretty good. Okay, I can see that uh, more and more of these details are beginning to come through here. Now, uh, as I continue to go around, I can see some of the ghosting that's being left behind there. And uh, again, I can just use our background brush tool to slowly shave away some of these things that we know are going to be extraneous details that we don't need. Okay, kind of let's click on that. It gets rid of that for me. Um, same for over here, just kind of like click into these few areas that we know are uh, areas that we don't need. But we still see that there is this little wisp of hair that Topaz is not figuring out on this side. When we look at the tri-map, we could see that we have eaten in on our tri-map really, really well. In fact, I'm going to purposely really outline that area so that you know that we've done the best job that we can in trying to isolate that hair away from its background. So let's see what happens when Topaz recalculates. And you will notice that still that hair is not visible. So in these difficult areas, we're going to once again use the new dual color selection tool. Here is how dual color selection works. When you first click on it, you want to sample a color from over here that you believe is a representation of the solid version of that color. Now, even though the hair is right now semi-transparent to the background, imagine what that would look like if it was completely solid and not semi-transparent. So I think this is a good representation right here, so I'll click on that color. Then select the background color that's going around that hair strand. So I think that this is a good example right here, so let's go ahead and select that. After you've done that, you can see that immediately the brush appears. So no, now we no longer have our eyedrop tool to sample colors. Just brush over that one single hair strand and watch what's going to happen here on this side. You can see immediately that Topaz now, by using the new dual color selection, knows how that foreground color is going to transition into that background color. And so now we have brought back this one little tiny strand of hair. So this way, even the most subtle, subtle details, uh, like for example, right over here, we can see again that there is that same kind of a problem. Again, sample what you know is a solid color, sample the background, and just kind of draw right over that area and watch what's going to happen. There we go. The magic happens, and a little detail comes back in. And whatever extra details are left around the perimeter, if there's a little bit of contamination around the mask, you can just go around the perimeter over here by using just our traditional background tool, which is the red brush. Uh, we'll get rid of some of those details. So as we go around, uh, we're going to constantly look for these little small details that would have that problem. We'll do the same thing. Choose dual color selection sample a color that we would know is pretty solid, like in this case, this one is a solid representation of that color. Here's the background, and just draw a little line right over that hair strand, and you can see that there it is. Once again, the little hair strand has been brought back in. Um, continuing to go around, same thing over here. I can see the little detail right there. Again, select the foreground, select a little of the background, draw right over that area, and now that piece of detail comes back. And I can use our uh, foreground color sampler to sample some of the foreground colors here, and then use the background color sampler to clean up some of the regions around the perimeter of it. There we go, beautiful. We're beginning to bring in more and more of those subtle little details. Okay, here's another one, is that little wisp of hair right there that we want to reintroduce back into the composite. As before, dual color selection, sample a solid version of that color, which is going to be, let's say, this one, and the background color of that one, and just draw right over that hair strand.
Okay, and you can see over here that, again, it has beautifully brought that back. Now, sometimes you might notice this little bit of contamination that's going on in here where it will kind of break it up. If you look at the TriMap, you can see that this is an area where my previous step, I did not have my blue or the compute brush in there. So if you ever notice that, just grab your blue brush and make sure you blew over that area again. It's going to kind of reset that area for you. So now, if you go back to the Keep, you can see that it cleans it up because the compute brush is doing what it's supposed to do. Do, which is to compute exactly what that region is supposed to look like. Okay, let's do the same thing over here. Uh, I can see that I can even draw our compute brush right on the color version of our image and let's see what it's going to compute like over here. That looks good. So let's take a look at the tri map. In the tri map, I'll use my foreground color to kind of eat in on the uh, area of the hair that we know is going to be more solid and that's going to help us introduce some of the original colors on the edge of her hair back into the mask. So as you proceed doing this, going around uh, the perimeter of her hair, you will slowly bring, bring, bring back every little detail that's necessary to do a perfect composite. Uh, and I see only one other area that I want to clean up over here before uh, we finish our composite and that's this area right here. So again, let's first just grab our blue brush and go around that area just to make sure that Topaz is having a good opportunity in sampling those regions. Okay. Now we know that some of the background is coming through that area. So by using our single color selection tool, I can select into that region in the background, make a thicker brush, and just draw right around there. So now that's going to help us, again, get rid of some of those little small details in the background that we're bleeding through. All right. I'm very, very happy with this mask. So uh, it looks like it's done. Let's go ahead and hit the OK button. Ta-da! So uh, let's get rid of the, the original background that was there. And also, we'll add a new layer put that layer into the background. So now, since uh, you have three layers now, once the original image, we have the image with the mask, and then finally this layer, let's go ahead and fill that in with a gray, or we can choose some of the default colors of either white or black, and you can examine and zoom in and see this beautiful composite and how we have extracted her away from the background with all the subtle details. So that was a quick tutorial on re uh, masking hair. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, and stay tuned for more exciting tutorials from Topaz Labs. Thank you.